Mobile smartphones have transformed our lives, as we all know, but of course they also make us much more vulnerable to cyber rorts such as identity theft. That's thought to cost the nation more than $2 billion a year. The latest scam's called porting. It's when a phone number's hijacked without the owner's knowledge, and then information inside the phone is used to gain access to online banking details. Like thousands of Australians each year, the ABC's Tracy Holmes recently fell victim. Tonight, she takes a look at how these criminals operate and what you can do to avoid being stung. Last week, somebody pretending to be me obtained my telephone number and potentially all of the personal information that goes with it. We posted a story on 7.30's Facebook page and the response from you was overwhelming. I got a um, text message saw on my phone saying uh, it was a PIN code that was being sent by Telstra. I phoned Telstra and explained that I'd been sent this key when I hadn't requested one. Uh, they said, thank you, it looks like someone might be trying to access your account. Um, about an hour later, I got another message. They said it looks like someone had tried five times to access my account. I just hung up the phone and I noticed that my phone went to SOS. So they said, yes, your phone's been uh, transferred to another name, to another account, uh, to another provider, in fact. So it was no longer with Telstra. Uh, they said there was nothing they could do. I had questions I needed answered. What had happened to my number in the period that they had it? What sort of personal information did they have access to? Given your response, I knew I wasn't alone. Hi, Deborah. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Thanks so much for coming nice in. Well. One of the people who contacted us was mother and business owner Deborah Brody. People just need to know what they need to do to make sure that it happens yep. as quickly as possible. And start changing things quickly. Yeah. yeah. Cancel everything. Yep. Yeah. So, Deborah, just tell me, we put this story up on Facebook and you got in touch with us. Yes. What was your reaction when you saw it? Oh, I, I was shocked. This particular event for me was very targeted. It was 5.30 on the Saturday of a long weekend. That gave them 72 hours where there was no security fraud access at the phone company. That gave them time to try and access the, the bank accounts and those sorts of things. So how quickly did you know that it was actually happening to you? So the, the message was at 5.34. Um, I was on the phone by 5.35. Uh, the second port message came through at 5.36. So by 5.40 the number was cut off. So, and I was physically on the phone to the security team at Optus at that time. So it was within four minutes, so four or five minutes and it was gone. The scam has attempted to reset Deborah's online banking codes, but her bank smelled a rat and froze the accounts. That was a win in the long run, but left Deborah without access to her money for 10 days. It was very, very quick and it was very, very um, specific what they were trying to do. It was complete, full-on panic ringing every single person I could think of that had any form of asset of ours, mortgage companies, banks, the phone companies. So is your situation resolved now? No, it won't be. Unfortunately, we're still unsure as to the security of the phone. That feeling of ongoing uncertainty is something I can definitely relate to. Hi, Tracy. Professor, how are you? Um, nice to meet you and sorry to hear about your experience. Yeah, thanks for that. David Lacey runs an organisation called ID Care, specifically established to help people whose personal information has been compromised. How commonly do you see this type of thing um, happen? We get between, between 10 to 30 calls like this a week. What we've seen in these cases is almost the crime unfold before your very eyes, which is what you've experienced. So these um, scams seem pretty slick. Yeah. Are they a professional operation? Yeah, it's certainly organised and, and in some cases so organised that we've had uh, instances where the criminals are aware that people are travelling overseas, know that they're, they're not using their phone and are porting their phone before they're landing. What are some of the um, more dubious tactics that they employ? Yeah, so in, in I guess our metropolitan areas, and even as recent as yesterday, we were getting calls from, from regional parts of the country. We're, we're seeing a link between mail theft syndicates and unauthorised portings. So can the telcos be doing more? I think we can all be doing more. The people doing this are defeatable. We can't throw our hands up in the air and say we can't do anything about it. We won't accept that. So I was told to actually put in a separate layer of security so that any time that I call in the future, I would be asked this extra level. Yeah. 
I was then told that the likelihood is... No one will ever ask you that. Yeah. So what's the point? Yeah, well, I think that's, that's a question that needs to be directed to the CEOs of the telcos. So, let's ask them. Tracy, our process for high-risk transactions like the ones, like the SIM swap transaction that you were involved with, is to use a one-time PIN verification code so that we can be sure that the customer who is contacting us is exactly who they say they are. But you can't be sure because that's what happened. I got the PIN and I rang Telstra and the Telstra person said to me, oh yes, I can see they've tried to access your account five times. Be assured the system's working. As I hung up the phone, my number disappeared. The porting process is an industry-wide process and we are committed to working with the industry bodies and the regulatory agencies to find a solution. Well, criminals and scammers are becoming more active. So I'm just off to see the fraud and cybercrime squad to see what they can tell me. How do these people, these units work? Look, many of the uh, individuals that we target here at the fraud and cybercrime squad are involved in organised crime. Um, that is their primary focus, that is their job. Strike Force Tamarisk extended for approximately 12 months. We've made multiple arrests. Um, and in that matter there, there was actually 45 victims uh, that were the subject of a fraud and approximately $1.5 million was obtained fraudulently um, by the criminals in that particular matter. I would strongly encourage anybody who's been the victim of, whether it be mail theft or phone porting, to come forward and notify the police. We can identify it, we can prosecute wherever we can, but more importantly we can refer them to those support services who can assist them to overcome some of the issues they may have in the future. If you were to give a checklist to people, what would you suggest? Well, I think people need to be very wary um, about the security of their identity documents. Not putting too much information online, clearing your mailbox, uh, reducing your risks for mailbox uh, mail theft um, and uh, making sure that understanding that your name, your date of birth, your address has real value to criminals. I've taken that advice but I've also learned another thing. If it happens to you, don't bother with the telcos because let's face it, once your number's gone, there's not a lot they're going to do. Freeze your bank accounts, then contact the police.